In today's video, I want to come back to the usual price action analysis where I can explore some peculiar situation regarding the pitchfork as I know many of you enjoy such types of videos. Today I want to take an example from the Apple stock in a daily time frame. For those of you who trade stocks in a daily time frame, you must have noticed by now that this time frame is a little bit noisier compared to the intraday charts. This video is an attempt to show you that this doesn't matter. We can use the same concepts and ideas to analyze any kind of price action. Needless to say, you have to concentrate a little bit more to see the relevant details in noisy price action. With that said, we can see in this chart that we have two major price factors from number 1 to number 3, and we can see that there is quite a bit of noise along the way. One of the problems with this noise is that you will have more difficulty seeing the relevant support and resistance levels, frequency lines, and supply and demand zones or levels as well. That's because there are small gaps all over the place, so you have to make an extra effort to abstract these levels. For example, in the 1 2 price factor, we can see that price goes sideways for a while and then it finally starts to go down after a gap to the downside. Logically speaking, this gap is the birth of the new price factor down, so to speak, and it's a zone worth marking in the chart. The gap, of course, will outline a supply zone where the high number 3 will stop. You can even see the pronounced upper tails in the candlesticks that pierce that zone. That's just an observation, it doesn't mean you should trade every time you can identify supply and demand zones. After number 3, we can see that price begins to go down. Some traders will look at the supply zone working, and they will beat themselves up because they didn't take the opportunity. Don't fall for this trap because there will be a lot of times where single techniques will work, but there will also be many times where they will fail. You need to filter more of the bad signals by aligning techniques together, as you probably already know. The question right now is where price is going to land and reverse. This is a particular situation because even though we are dealing with major price vectors, we don't really have confirmed highs and lows. We only have confirmed minor highs and lows buried in the major price vectors. As price begins to travel in the direction of low number 2, there are several minor demand levels on the way. And that of course implies that you will have to watch each one if you want to trade near these levels. However, that's usually a mistake because you need to have a greater perspective rather than focusing just on the minor price movements. For example, in the 2-3 price vector, we have two minor demand zones that might spark a reversal to the upside. Don't forget also that both can fail completely in nudging price to the upside. One of the ways you can decide which level to use is by gaining a broader perspective by the use of pitchforks. For example, if we place a standard pitchfork on the major highs and lows 1, 2, and 3, we'll notice a few things. First is that the correlation with the higher zone has already passed, and the correlation with the second zone also passed. That means that in terms of timing, the standard pitchfork is already obsolete despite being perfectly valid. In this case, we can transform the standard pitchfork into a modified shift one, and then we'll immediately see that the center line correlates with the higher zone in the near future. It's a matter of observing what price does if it reaches that level. Remember once again that the major highs and lows in this case are a bit misleading because what really matters in terms of supply and demand in this scenario is the minor supply in the demand zones because we have no confirmed major ones. So let's fast forward price to see what happens. Now we can see that price lands on the sensor line of the pitchfork correlating with one of the minor demand zones. In addition to that, we can see an immediate bump up after price lands on the sensor line of the pitchfork. The important thing here is not price landing on the sensor line of the pitchfork exactly, it's the combination of elements that produce this small nudge in price. Speaking of different elements converging, we can see that there is also a continuation divergence happening at this point. The small nudge has the potential to become a large trend afterwards. It also has the potential to only be a tiny nudge that will fail completely. It's important to keep that in mind. If you were to go long in this situation, we have a double protection in terms of stop loss. We have the natural stop loss created by the small burst of buying pressure after price touched the center line of the pitchfork, and we also have the stop loss generated by the confirmed minor low out of which the demand zone comes. 
Let's advance price to see how it develops. Here we can see that price went back up to the level of the supply zone in high number 3. That's an important level to watch out, and it's also time to update the line work we have since we have relevant new information. The new major low will be called low number 4, and we can use the market extremes 2, 3 and 4 to draw a new standard pitchfork. By doing that, we can observe that price hits the center line of the fork exactly when it hits the supply zone from the beginning of the video. It's also producing a clear fractal bar and a bearish reversal divergence in relation to high number 3. In other words, this situation screams sell opportunity. The only problem with a sell in that level is that the supply zone that originated the last factor down failed to produce any meaningful advance to the downside, meaning that no significant lower lows were created. With that said, there is nothing wrong with taking a sell trade in there. After all, this is all speculation, so we never know for sure what's going to happen. If we are looking for a buy, however, there are a few details regarding the new upsloping pitchfork and its variations. We need to first understand what happened with price after low number 4. Notice the peculiar way in which price rises. It makes an explosion to the upside, and then it slows down the upper movement acceleration to create a minor running flow. The end of the explosive movement up and the beginning of the running flow represents an important change and it correlates with the lower line of the upsloping pitchfork. Let's advance price to see where it goes from there. Notice that in this case, the pitchfork worked as a great trend trading tool. It actually gave a few more entry points if you were to think about a long trade, and the trend ended at the upper line of this pitchfork. This serves to show once again that it doesn't matter the market or the time frame. Price action behaves in the exact same way anywhere you look. I hope you learned something new with this video. If you are a beginner and new here in the channel, please make sure you watch the beginner courses I have available for free in the technical analysis secret series also before you jump in the more advanced price action videos. If you want to take your trading to the next level, you can check my paid courses in my official website fractalflowpro.com available in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.